Well, welcome back to Channel Ron. Today I'm going to be installing a parking sensor on my prop car here. Moving around the yard here, I really think that I should have something on here because everything is so close quarters. The one I installed a while back ago, which I did not do a film on, uh, actually had a sensor that you put on the dash, and I really don't really care for that. So the one I picked up this time is it just has an alert buzzer that I'm going to put in the rear uh, uh, inside the vehicle in it just to tell me that if I'm too close to something. It comes with, obviously, this part here, the alert system, the little mechanism, uh, the little control box, and it comes with four sensors themselves. I've already installed one sensor, and I've installed this where they recommend not to install it. They recommend to install it according to the directions here on the bumper. Well, unfortunately, this car here, I really can't do that. This is just such an old vehicle, and it just doesn't work out. Uh, it's designed for basically the newer vehicles with plastic bumpers. And with that, it comes along with this uh, little hole saw here that's really only good for like the plastic bumpers. I'm going to use a unibit and go right into the metal. They say that what's happening according to the directions is you may get some false uh, sensor readings on the bumper here. But I've hooked up this one just to test it and it works fine. Also you want to go anywhere from 11 to 15 inches apart. I'm going to be doing something different on that as well. I'm going to have to, uh, where I have the trunk here, I'm going to put two on this side and two over here. And it'll be fine for what I'm doing around here in the yard. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing today. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I've already got this one installed, and I did that on purpose just to see if it was going to work, and it's working fine. Um, again, I'm going to be going through some metal rather than the plastic bumper. That's why I need to use the unit bit, because the bit that they give you just will not work in this. It's designed for the plastic. It says in the manual to go about uh, 11 to 15 inches or so, and I'm just going to come over about a foot, and I'm going to put it right over here. So just roughly, I'm going to come over, and I'm going to mark about a foot right there. And then I came up from that seam, I came up about an inch and a half. So I'm going to go right about there. So I'm going to take and drill a pilot hole first before I put the unibit in. Now I went all the way through because I, I know I'm going to have to do that in here anyhow. And also I need the, the pilot bit to be able to bite into. I'm sorry, the unibit. So go ahead and take a unibit, put it on, and you're going to have to uh, find out what setting that you want. So I'm pretty sure I know which one it is, but I'll go slow. On the sensors themselves, it's going to be marked um, which way it has to be up. So you have to make sure that the arrow is pointing up or the sensor won't function properly. All right, make sure that's up, and you should be able to just pop that into place. Just like that. And you should be all set. So that wasn't too bad. All right, so we'll worry about the wiring stuff at a later date, uh, later date, in a little bit here once I get the other two in. So let's move to the other side. Now that we have the sensors all installed, obviously this would have gone a little easier and much cleaner if I'd used a hole saw, but this is not designed for metal, it's only designed for plastic that you get with these kits. Also, the uh, unibit, when you use those, they're not a very clean hole, okay, it leaves a little bit of ridge on it, so you kind of have to finagle it a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I need to choose where I want to put the control box, and I'm going to put it on this side of the vehicle. 
And uh, when you do that, make sure you bring your wires over. And you may want to mark them. I don't believe they're marked on here at all. No, I don't see any marks. But you want to mark those because I know on the last one, it does make a difference. It goes from A to D. So I'm going to go A, B, C, D. And you want to make sure that you put them in the right location. On the other sensors that I've used, I think it made a difference because it has a display panel in the front of the vehicle, depending on which side of the vehicle is sensing something. This one, I don't believe it matters because it's just an alarm, but I'm going to, all, I'm going to go ahead and put it in A, B, C, D. So keep that in mind to make sure that you know where these are going. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in all my sensors. And just like uh, I said before, you want to make sure you mark them. So here's C. So I'm going to plug in C. We have A. We have B. We have D. Now what this comes with is a nice little uh, double-sided tape that you can use. Now it has a couple screw holes here that you can screw it in but I'm going to go ahead and use this double sided tape. And I kind of know where these other ones are going to go but I can plug those in if I want. This is the power and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And then we have the sensor itself for the alarm but I may have to run that down through the back uh, the trunk area so I'm going to leave that one unplugged right now. So I'm just going to kind of pre-fit it and have how I'd like to have that set in there. And it looks like it's going to be perfect just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put that double sided tape on. Go ahead and place that like that. Confirm again that's where I want to put it. Yeah, that looks good right there. Peel the other side off. And here we go. So that's mounted, not a whole lot to that. So with the, as far as all the sensor wires here, what I'm going to do with those is I'm just going to um, wire tie those all together. Now as far as this one here goes, uh, there's a nice little spot I can put right up inside here and it's going to actually um, be right up at the deck. So there's actually a place for this here. I can put this right up, right up in this little cavity right here, and it's actually going to go through the uh, the back deck, and I should be able to hear that fine. All right. So now all we need to do is just run the wire. All right, now that we've got everything all set to go, we need to go ahead and power it up. So you're going to have two wires. You've got your red wire, then you have your red and black. The red and black represents the negative, and then the red wire represents the positive. So what you need to do is turn the ignition on, and just turn it on. Don't start the vehicle. Put a block underneath the wheel, pull your emergency brake, and put it in reverse. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find the uh, positive for this. All right, now the black is generally going to be the negative, so we kind of know that. Uh, but one of these is going to be the backup light and uh, looking at the rear light here We have a backup light and we have a uh, Marker light so the backup light is on and if I go in here because I'm pretty sure this is the one I'm gonna go ahead and I'm getting a green light there, but if I go and test it here I'm gonna get I'm getting a green light as well So I'm gonna go ahead and put it here. That's because the marker light is on automatically when you start the vehicle So if I go take this out of reverse, I should lose this light. So let me go do that Okay, and it did. So the light went out. So that's telling us that's the reverse light. So I'm going to go ahead and try that one more time just to confirm it. And there it is. Okay, so our green light is on telling us that we have power coming to this wire right here. So we're going to tap into this wire and we're going to tap into this ground wire over here. I've got the ground just hooked onto the body chassis right here. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just strip a little bit back on this ground wire here. Do that first. To expose the copper like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here for the light that we found for our backup light. I'm just going to strip that back a little bit. Now they do make some crimps that you can put right in here and it splices right into it. I really don't like them. I like to solder it. So you can use whatever you want. Then I'm going to go ahead and wrap my negative. Then I'm going to wrap my positive. Yeah. Then I'm going to go ahead and solder it. Go ahead and take some electrical tape and just cover that up. All right, I'm real happy with that. I have two sensors here. I have two sensors here. Ultimately, what you want to do is you want to space those out evenly across the back here. But the way the trunk is laid out, it really wasn't going to work out for me. I would have had to extend the wire. So, but for what I'm doing here, it's a prop car. I'm moving it around the yard. Um, basically, I just want to make sure that I don't run to another vehicle or uh, somebody. So it's going to work fine for what I have along with the backup camera. Remember that all the vehicles are going to be a little bit differently and you're going to find that the bumper is going to be the way to go. You're going to get a much cleaner fit as well, whereas the unit bit doesn't give you a really clean uh, hole on that. So we well, hope this helps you on your uh, parking lot uh, backup alarm system and we'll stay tuned for the next one.